name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My adorable Jesus, may our feet journey together. May our hands gather in unity. May our hearts beat in unison. May our souls be in harmony. May our thoughts be as one. May our ears listen to the silence together. May our glances profoundly penetrate each other. May our lips pray together to gain mercy from the Eternal Father. Amen. The priests of California, that they would all be holy men and that they would love one another. Amen. Let's pray for them right now for all the priests. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus.
But beloved, we need to begin with this, understanding how absolutely beautiful and godly every child is. There's no such thing as a disposable child. Every child, every teenager, every young adult is, as John Paul said, unique, precious, and unrepeatable. Amen? Amen. Would you say this after me now? These are the words of St. John Paul. Would you say this? Every child, every child is unique, is unique precious, precious, and unrepeatable. unrepeatable. There's no such thing as a disposable child. Amen? Amen? That means abortion must become really unthinkable. Amen? Amen? Beloved, realize this. There's a battle going on. And really, the target are your children. Satan wants an army, an end times army of young people who are mindless and devoid of faith and rationality, who are driven only by their emotions and by their iPhones, that he can take over to destroy the nation, to destroy the world. Amen? Amen? So be aware of what's happening. And every day, as John Paul taught us, to pray for our children and our teenagers. Amen? Amen. So we're going to pray right now the unity prayer. I understand they have a copy for you, but don't worry. If you don't have it, we'll get one for you after Mass. You can say this after me. This is the new Flame of Love unity prayer that binds and paralyzes all evil spirits. We're going to bind and bind them now from the church. Are you ready? Would you say this after me? Would you stand with me just for a minute? That's a sign of authority and the spiritual life. And don't be afraid of the demons. The demons are afraid of you. Amen? Amen. Would you say this after me? My adorable Jesus. My adorable Jesus. May our feet journey together. May our feet journey together. May our hands gather in unity. May our hands gather in unity. Speak in unison. May our hearts be in unison. May our souls be in harmony. May our souls be in harmony. May our thoughts be as one. May our thoughts be as one. May our ears listen to the silence together. May our ears listen to the silence together. May our glances profoundly penetrate each other. May our glances profoundly Together. May our lips pray together to gain mercy from the Eternal Father. To gain mercy from the Eternal Father. Amen. Amen. Now we'll say the smaller prayer. We normally insert it into the Hail Mary, but it can be also said as a standalone prayer. Would you say this after me? O Blessed Lady, O Blessed Lady, spread the effect of grace. Spread the effect of grace of thy flame of love.
I was praying over the holy nuns. There's some holy nuns in London. They still wear their habit and their veil, you know what I mean? They're praying before the Blessed Sacrament day and night, the Thai Burn Convent. So I was there just two days ago, and one sister, now she's learning how to do deliverance and exorcism, so she can assist the priest. She's a superior, and she had somebody who was possessed, and to be very careful with these things, that the demon the, hit the sister and knocked her across the room and threw her shoulder out. So I was there to, I was there to give her some instructions on how to keep saying, I talk with the unity prayer. And I prayed over her, right then, all the pain disappeared. Amen. Amen. It's so beautiful to see a nun or a priest healed in front of your eyes. Amen. Amen. And so, beloved, I hear I was in Quito, and the nuns there asked me to pray for them. And they are also contributive nuns. And so I made a deal with them. I made a deal. You know, my dad was a lawyer. <laughs> so I made a deal with them. The sisters want me to bless the whole convent on an exorcist by training. So to do an exorcism blessing of the convent, you see? And I'm sure, sisters, I will, but as long as you let me see the saint who lives there, Mother Marianne Torres, back in the 1500s, who received perhaps the greatest revelations in the history of the Catholic Church. Her body is completely incorrupt. I mean completely incorrupt, you know what I mean? Like many of the saints we go to visit, they're so beautiful, but it's like a wax face and things like that, you know, almost all of them. But this is the same, there's no wax whatsoever. She looks younger than you and I. She looks fresher than you and I. It's not fair, actually, it's not fair. <laughs> she looks better than you. Can you imagine how things are in heaven? She looks that way on earth, how things are in heaven. So I, I did my part of the deal. I blessed the whole convent with an exorcism blessing. And it went through and sprinkled holy water and did the ritual prayers. And, so at the end, Sister went to bring us to see the saint. And I don't know if you know the prophecies, it is the only Marian apparition in the 2000 year history of the Catholic Church that was approved by the local bishop the day it happened, completely approved, and by every single bishop of Quito from that day to today. It's the only apparition approved by every single bishop of the diocese from the moment it happened. That's unusual. That's because it's unusually important. Amen. Amen. She said many things, and almost all of her prophecies have come true. She prophesied many, many things. But in particular, the beautiful Virgin Mary prophesied to Mariana Torres that by the middle of the 20th century, darkness would begin to cover the earth. By the middle of the 20th century. You know, around 1940, 1950, 1960. Does that sound about right? Yes. yes. That's when television sets, for one thing, began to spread through this country, television sets, around the same time. That's when uh, the Protestants had a special conference called the Lambeth Conference, the Anglicans. The Catholic Church was the only Christian church that did not attend, because there they quote unquote approved artificial contraception. But when they did that, saying that was legitimate and holy for Christians who are married to one another to practice this artificial contraception, which is a form of impurity, it opened the floodgates for sexual immorality to go through the country and the world. Amen? Yeah. So right about that time, isn't it? We had the sexual revolution. Right after that, they put great pressure on Pope Paul VI to approve it, and he didn't, right? He wrote that amazing letter, Humanae Vitae. I don't know if this is true, but my friends who live in Rome told me that Paul the sixth body is also incorrupt. I haven't seen it, but that's what I've heard from those who live there. So that such a revolution came flooding through the world. Our Lady said this back in the 1500s, that by the middle of the 20th century, darkness would flood the earth. Then she said, by the year 2000, I remember she's speaking in the 1500s, by the year 2000, the darkness would be so heavy and so thick, you could barely find one innocent soul, even among the children. Can you spell iPad? Can you spell iPhone? How did Mary know that more than 450 years ago? 
my memory of this particular phenomenon is this. I was waiting in the airport some years ago. I'd come back to our country from another place. I was waiting. I had my luggage for my pickup. And to my people waiting, to my left, was a beautiful young couple with their little tiny baby boy in a stroller. And they were like a wonderful looking family, husband and wife and a little tiny boy. And they were waiting to my left, I was waiting here. And it's obvious, I was waiting for my pickup, they were waiting to pick up somebody. They didn't have any luggage, you see. And suddenly I heard them shout with glee, with joy, and just shouted over here. Woo! And I turned around. And there comes the sister of the bride. They were like twins, you know what I mean? They were just like her. So that was the sister of the young mother. She came from her airplane and she went to greet them. I guess her sister and her brother-in-law. And then they introduced her. She was seeing for the first time her nephew. The little, cute little boy in the stroller. And so the aunt knelt down by the stroller. It was very, very touching, very beautiful at first. So she knelt down in the stroller and she went to hug the little boy. She was cooing over him, you know, and was admiring him. He was a beautiful child. And the little boy, he had in his hands an iPad. I mean, the little boy, it couldn't have been more than three. He had an iPad in his hand. And all the while that his aunt, with great lavish love, was trying to hug him and kiss him and talk to him, I was watching. The little boy never took his eyes off the iPad for one millisecond. I mean, not even a millisecond. His eyes were glued to the iPad. And I watched as the aunt was trying to hug him and meet him to introduce herself to her nephew. He never looked at her. And I saw her progressively become, like, depressed. Like, you can see her, like, losing all of her steam and all of her life. And she looks at the sister, her sister, and the daddy, and they look at her with a pained look on their face. Give me a break. If that had been me and Stroller and my dad, you would not have looked at someone with a pained look. You would have taken the iPad and thrown a frisbee <laughs> across the airport. Amen? Amen? What is wrong with us today? Amen? How dare you let that child disrespect his elder? How dare you do that? Amen? Amen. So that child will end up disrespecting everyone, every parent, every uncle, every aunt, every teacher, every president, every priest, even God, you will disrespect. Amen? Amen. Well, our lady said it, that the dark should be so thick you could hardly find one innocent child, even among the teenagers, among the children, by the year 2000. I think we've hit that mark. Amen? Amen. I remember being in Poland a couple of years ago. And Poland is one of the best one countries in the universe. To be honest with you, it really is. They still have their Catholic faith, you see. Poland and Hungary are the two best countries, I think, in the world as far as their values and their faith and their leadership. So I was there in Jordan, Poland, where John Paul grew up and had some wonderful experiences there. But I remember on the last day of the pilgrimage, I spoke to another young priest from Ireland. I think his name was Father Barry. I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, quite an Irish rogue, let me tell you. We were talking about everything. I said, isn't Poland beautiful? He said, yes, Father. I said, you know, though, I'm concerned about one thing. He said, what's that, Father? I said, I think that Poland will be destroyed in 20 years. And he looked at me, Father, why do you say that? Because everywhere we went, you know, in Krakow and every place else, the teenagers were all there at their own like, school groups, like 50 or 100 or 200 teenagers everywhere, all well-groomed, right? No tattoos, well-groomed, wearing nice, clean clothes. Everywhere we went, churches, outside churches, everywhere. But every single teenager in Poland had a cell phone in his hand. Every single one. 
male or female. They were watching them. And I said to my priest brother, I fear the Poland. If they let this continue, in 20 years they will be lost. Amen? Amen. Father, then he said to me, Father, I was thinking the same thing. It was actually frightening to be absolutely scary. So our cell phones and our iPads become a portal for Lucifer. Amen? Amen. But here is then what Mama said after that, in the end, there. Because our God is a God of hope. Therefore, Mary is the mother of holy hope. Amen? Amen. Mary then said this to this beautiful holy nun, Mary Antoine, she said, Shortly after the year 2000, just when it appears that everything is lost. Sound familiar? Yeah. Shortly after the year 2000, just when it appears that everything is lost, like children eight years old, physically mutilating their bodies to become the other gender, and parents who try to intervene thrown in jail, just when it appears that everything, a president who calls himself Catholic, who dares to call himself a devout Catholic, and kills unborn children in record numbers, just when it appears that everything is lost, I will come down from heaven with my son. We will chain Lucifer. We will cast it into hell. And we will convert the human race. Amen. So Mama says to tell you we must pray for this. Amen? Amen. We have to pray for this coming victory that Our Lady promised us. And you can't help but think, you know this, how could her body be so perfectly incorrupt? It's impossible. Even Padre Pio, how beautiful he is, you know, his body, that's a, a wax mass. You know that, right? Yeah, they, they don't tell you that, but they, they probably should, you know. I don't blame them. They want to keep it looking pretty, you know what I mean? But this saint, oh my gosh. When you walk in there, you think she's going to sit up and offer you some coffee when you walk in there. And so, I always wanted to go and seek her and pray next to her body. Several other of the nuns are also in Iraq. This never happened in the history of the entire world. Where several nuns in the same convent are in Iraq. Mamma mia! So I see two holy nuns, I think, over there. Sisters, welcome. We love you. So would you stand up just for a minute, sisters? Would you give them a round of love? Both of you becoming corrupt as well. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Don't you love your sisters? Yes. And when the victory comes from heaven, that Jesus and Mary, and only Jesus and Mary can bring it, no one else. When they bring this victory, the whole world will be converted to the Catholic faith, the entire world. There will be millions of holy young priests and nuns throughout the world. Amen. 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 Can you imagine that? What a great marvelous fear of the time. And by the way, that was prophesied, did you know, by the fathers of the church? That isn't something new. Way back in the first 200 years of the church, many of the fathers of the church prophesied. You know, like, people like John Chrysostom and Peter Chrysologus, they prophesied that before the final day, there would be a terrific battle. At the end of that battle, the church would rise up in splendor at the end of this battle, before the final day, and was called the golden era of the church. Amen? Amen? So something marvelous is coming to the world only through Jesus and only through Mary. So when I made my deal with the sisters there, the Conception sisters, I asked the Lord as they brought me to the, it's a glass coffin, a glass tomb. I knelt down with my team. I have a deacon who travels with me and his wife. And I have like a bodyguard who travels with me. He's like <laughs> six foot eight and 350 pounds. You don't mess with him at all. Even the demons are afraid of him <laughs> and his wife. So I knelt down and I touched the glass coffin and I prayed quietly. And I was 
really it was kind of weeping. And I was asking the Virgin Mary to fulfill the prophecy. Mama is telling us we have to pray for this. Amen? Amen. Let's pray one Hail Mary right now, beloved. One Hail Mary, that that prophecy will be fulfilled in California ASAP. Amen? Amen. We can't wait, can we? No. Our children are dying. Yes. And we have the worst leadership in the history of our country, and every government law is the worst corrupt leadership in the world. Amen? Amen. Let's pray now that that will be fulfilled, that holy prophecy. We have to pray for it to come down. And so the Bible says, Maranatha, Lord Jesus, Maranatha, come. Let's pray now for that victory. For California, first of all, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. have to pray for the gift of prayer. You have to pray for the gift of prayer. I can hear your voices in my spirit. I feel that a lot of us today are kind of down. We need to have a fire within us, a fire, a fire of love, a flame of love. We pray expecting. Amen? Amen. So we have a healing service. I'm going to knock you on the head, okay? <laughs> With the relic of the true cross. And ask God to give you a new gift of prayer because even lay people can work miracles. Amen? Amen. We need to pray with excitement, knowing that God will answer our prayers and He's waiting for enough people to pray to send forth the answer. Amen? Amen. You're part of that group that's been chosen for California. So I'm praying there with tears. Please, Jesus and Mary, please, Mariana, fulfill this prophecy for the human race. What I'm seeing is unbelievable. I even have, I have a nephew who's turned to Satan, to Satanic cult, one of my own nephews. Because his father used to beat him. I understand why, to be honest with you. But still, it's horrific what's happening all over the world. And I said, please, please fulfill the prophecy. I'm touching the glass coffin and I'm really, I'm weeping. We can't wait. And that's why God's waiting. He's waiting for you and I to get up off of our duffs and start praying like saints. Amen? Amen. This group alone, right here, you could spark this victory right here alone. You can set it in motion today. Amen? Amen. God is needing millions, but he needs a few who will pray with all their heart like you mean it. Amen? Amen. Pray with a childlike faith like you mean it. This group here could save the world. Amen? Amen. Well, let's start with California. They say California. Amen? Amen. So I'm praying, my hand on that last coffin, when the little nun, one of Mary Antoris's, one of the sisters of her community, she's over here, and she says to me, Un momento, Padrecito, un momento, like, just a moment, Father. When they say Padrecito, he say, love me. <laughs> if they say, Padre, you know, you know, you know, Padrecito, we you know, you know, everything okay? I said, si, hermana, si. So she went off somewhere. I don't know where she went. We just kept praying. She came back in three minutes later with a set of keys in her hand. As far as I know, this has never happened before in the history of the convent. Ever. Why it happened then, all I can say is, Holy Spirit. That's all I can say. Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. You begin to pray in the Holy Spirit, you'll see miracles yourselves every day. Amen? Amen. Always pray in the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen? Whether in English or in Spanish or in tongues, at Mass or your rosary, with the Bible, always pray in the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. Never pray apart from Him, pray in union with Him. Amen? He is your birthright, given to you at baptism, refreshed at every mass, and cleansed at every confession. He is your best friend. He is your power. He is your law. He is your prayer. Amen? Amen. Always pray in the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen? That means pray with sincerity. When you pray with fire, pray like you mean it. Amen? Amen. Well, 
She came in with those keys. I looked at her, I looked at my group. She went to the back of the glass coffin and opened it. Now, Mariana, the saint, she's now vulnerable. The local bishop just announced he wants to canonize her. This is the time, isn't it? This is the time. See, God has perfect timing, perfect timing, perfect timing. This is the time to canonize him, right? Then the whole world will wake up to this, even to our souls. Amen? Amen? Even he will wake up and say, my goodness, what is this? It's infallible, this body, perfect, for 500 years? Well, she said to me, she opened up the coffin and said to me, Father, touch the saint. As far as I know, that's never happened before, ever. It's locked, you know what I mean? Of course it is. She said to me, Father, touch the saint. Now, I, I didn't ask her for this. I, I wouldn't dream to ask that in a million years. I know I'll see her in heaven anyway, you know what I mean? We'll do an Irish jig together when I get to heaven. <laughs> I never would have asked that. But you see, praying in the Holy Spirit, the Spirit heard my prayer, and the Spirit touched her heart to fulfill my prayer. Amen? Amen. We were kind of shocked, but then again, I'm so used to miracles, what can I say? You did it again! <laughs> you did it again! Amen? Amen. What else could I say? So I said, see, and my mom, see. And she opened the glass coffin, and I went to reach in and touch the saint. I had just blessed the whole convent where she used to live, that saint, you see. I reached in and then I hesitated because I'm a man and she's a woman. And my daddy always taught me to treat every woman with respect. Amen? Yeah. That's literally what went rushing through my consciousness. It's like, this is a woman. I, I can't touch her leg. You know what I mean? Even when I was a young man, before I was a priest, I was dating, I wouldn't touch my, my girlfriend's leg. Are you kidding me? <laughs> You're not supposed to do that, are you? Somebody get the word out in California. <laughs> Try to get the word out in Hollywood, amen? You're not supposed to trust that girl, are you? No, you don't need to do that anyway. That's not even love. That's called lust. That's not love. So anyway, I went to the kind of, oh, my, this is a girl. <laughs> I can't touch her. I felt really funny. And as a priest, I'm a Catholic priest, she's a Catholic nun. Well, what can I do? And so I thought about it real quick. He said, I know. I'll touch her foot. <laughs> She's got a little slippers on anyway, you know what I mean? I can touch the slipper. So I reached in and I just touched her foot, her slipper. And when I did, my hand began to vibrate like this thing. It's never happened to me before. Other people get that. I don't get that to put it in. First time for me, touch her foot. <laughs> yeah, just see. And my hand was shaking with a power of God's Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The saints are so awesome, aren't they? Yes. I got news for you. The Baptists and the Methodists and the Anglicans, they need saints too. Amen. 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 They'll be coming back to the one true church soon and they can go and pray there with us. Amen. Amen. Well, after I prayed for two or three minutes, I removed my hand and my team was watching me like in wonder. And so I took a bold step in front of sister, and I said, Mama, por favor, please, can my team touch her too? No. Right? Because, you know, I'm a father. I have to watch out for my kids, right? <laughs> Besides that, they might get jealous of me, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? I got to check myself as well. So she said, see, Mom. So I had Deacon Michael come up, and Deacon Michael, who's a charismatic deacon, also an exorcist like myself, he touched her foot, same thing. <sighs> you see it? Then Maria, Deacon Michael's wife, came up, little tiny Maria, she's from Peru herself. She went up and she touched the same thing. Then I asked my bodyguard, the one who scares Lucifer, my big giant bodyguard, <laughs> and he went in, he was crying. Big boy was weeping, of course you're weeping. He, he, same thing, then his wife, same thing. All five of us. And they locked up the glass coffin. And we said goodbye. We went down to the gift shop, got a few souvenirs. 
I don't have any money, but they always buy me stuff, you know what I mean? And we went out, outside the company, and then I saw why the sisters asked me like, to do an exorcism of the convent, standing outside the convent in the city square, it was actually the national square of Ecuador, were witches, all of them. And they were selling their wares, selling curses to God's people, all around the convent. And so my team said to me, Father, get them, Father, get them, Father, get them! Because they know I'm an exorcist, you know what I mean? As you well, I said, we will, but there's more than one way to slay a cat. Amen? <laughs> Let's do this. So we always keep in our pockets hand grenades. I mean, take me to the metal. <laughs> we always keep them with us. So I have two bags of hand grenades in my pockets. I'll be taking the medals. I said, let's do this. So I prayed over the medal to an exorcism blessing, and I went to every witch and went up to them. Some of them are just ignorant. I mean, they're not always like malicious and mean and evil. They're like raised in that nonsense. But witchcraft is forbidden in Quito and in California. Amen? Amen. It's dangerous. I don't, I don't care what you call it. I mean, white magic is dangerous. It opens the gate to the demons. Amen? Amen. So I went to each one. And I gave each one a hand grenade. I mean, a hand grenade and arrow. I went to the lady, you know what it was? I said, Oh, that man, no. They said, Oh, that puppy, he died. And I said, This is for you. And I gave each one a mind blowing exorcism. Yeah. <laughs> and they threw it around their back. They said, Oh, gracias, puppy, he died. And I said, You're welcome. You're welcome. Every witch you can go now has a hand grenade and arrow. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. So if you know a witch, buy a sacred medal and get it to her. Amen? Amen. Now the Lord told me that we have a little bit of interference today, so we pray special so that no witches could come here and cause trouble here today. You realize that, don't you? He yes. showed me that in advance. You've already blessed them out. And I'm going to say, another thing, Mary, right now, if there's anybody in the church who is a witch, who came here to do any trouble, or anybody who's practicing any form of witchcraft, that Jesus Christ will reign over your soul. Amen? Amen. It's great enough for anyone doing witchcraft. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. city square, which is the national square of Quito, it's a massive convent. It's right there. It was there before Ecuador was a country. It was there when Ecuador was a colony, you see. And the government has tried to steal it from the sisters, of course. What does every government do? They try to steal their convent. Because it's like prime property in the national square. But Our Lady told Mother Mariana Torres, that that convent would remain standing till the end of time. Till the end of time. They tried to grab it. And they did it again just a few years ago. The president declared that the convent was now public property. He was going to take it. It was actually December, New Year's Eve. And he put the guard, the soldiers lined up around 11 o'clock. He said by midnight on New Year's Eve, before the beginning of the new year, the nuns were to leave the convent and they were to get over. So the nuns actually lined up at 11.30 with little candles. They prayed at the direction of Mother Superior. The army was outside with weapons and battle fatigues, hundreds of men, to storm the place at midnight. True story. We looked this up. It happened in our lifetime a few years ago at 11.59 p.m. The president was thrown out of office and the new president put in a government to nine years. That happened.
happen in our time. We need the same thing happen in Washington right now, don't we? <laughs> it happened in our time. We pray that it will happen here as well. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Every government should serve Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. He alone is the Lord of the world. He shed his blood for this country. Only Jesus should be honored, and he must be honored by every president, every prime minister, by word and by deed. Amen? Amen. When the victory comes, the whole world will become Catholic and truly Catholic. Amen? Amen. Mad men in love with Jesus, filled with the Holy Spirit, children of Mary, and saints. Amen? Amen. Lord be love him. We went through the, the National Square to go to the local church nearby for the evening mass. It was Saturday. But the square was filled with people. And it was, to be honest with you, I'll try to get into the story, but it was, to be honest with you, the darkest city square, national square, that I've ever seen. You see, I travel quite a bit, so I see this, this capitals of all the nations and what's there. I have never seen a national square like this. We left Arkham, like the Washington Mall, maybe. It was filled with darkness. Filled with darkness. There were men and women selling drugs, right there, publicly selling drugs. There was a woman dressed like Lucifer, a tall, thin woman with a black outfit and black wings. She was dressed like Satan himself. She actually looked frightening. I don't know, the kids were afraid of her. Unbelievable. There was an acting troupe there, they were doing a play, and as they were doing this play, they were like yelling at one another, the actors were screaming and yelling, it was like a violent play. The people looked like zombies. It was also, you could almost cut the demonic in the air. And we looked at it and I told my team, you know, let's wait on the church for a few minutes. We have some work to do. <coughs> so I took out two more bags of hand grenades. I mean, single grenade medals. <laughs> and I gave them to the two ladies in our group to pass them out. And I told everyone to pull out their rosaries. We began praying the flame of love rosary. We began with the unity prayer. We said the family love rosary. It's a bright sunny day there in Ecuador. The, the square is filled with darkness and so many people can't be moved. We forced our way through, praying the rosary, we went all the way in a square across the whole national square. We did the first side. My ladies passed out, said the medals to everyone. We prayed the rosary, we had the two men sprinkle exercise holy water. We sprinkled holy water. As we got almost to the end of the first side, suddenly, <laughs> thunder rolled across the sky. Oh. There's no sounds, there's no rain. It's hotter than California. Thunder rolled across the sky. I looked at my team, I took off my glasses, and I went like this. <laughs> Again, aren't you? <laughs> so I said, just keep going. When you're winning, keep going. Amen? Amen. So we did the second side of the square, passing out the medals, drinking holy water, leading the rosary. We get almost to the end. Suddenly, <laughs> a second round of thunder on the second side of the square. People look up. They start leaving. Mm. We keep going. Let's keep going, guys. We do the third side, it starts to drizzle, there's no clouds. There's no clouds, it starts to drizzle. We get to the end of the third side, and another rolling thunder. <laughs> then it gets dark. The whole square is emptying out. We do the fourth side, the last side. We finish that, no more thunder. We looked up, not one single person remained in the square. I mean zero, right? no, not one or two, no, no, zero. Every single person practicing witchcraft, selling drugs, doing a dirty play, everyone was gone. The whole square was empty. And I thought, this is what God has in mind. I just came from the saint to who was prophesied to California and the human race. The judgment of years, everything is lost, filled with drugs and darkness and witchcraft. Just when it appears that way, I will come down from heaven with my immaculate heart and my son, and I will cast Satan into hell and convert the human race. I saw that in front of me. Amen. And then I realized that 
think about it afterwards. I touched Mariana's foot, literal Mariana. It was her foot that vibrated. Then I got it, oh, I touched her foot. That means I'm getting ready to move. <laughs> you see what I mean? Because there are those who eyes to see and ears to hear, interpret correctly what God is doing. How did that saint 450 years dead? How did her foot shake in my hand? Because God's getting ready to move through Quito and through California as well. Amen? Amen. The victory is coming. Amen? Amen. You say, Heavenly Heaven, would you raise your right hand, beloved? Would you raise your holy right hand? There are no losers here. We are winners. Amen? Amen. You say, the victory is coming. The victory is coming. You say it with conviction. The victory is coming. The victory is coming. I know the victory is coming. Thank you. Good evening. I have to confess right up front, I may break a the big rule for Lent and I might